Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today, we're going to do a third lecture in a row on the law. If you get a chance, check out the episode called The Law, and then check out the episode called Storytelling and Picture Taking. Those two episodes were delivered consecutively. The story is, in 1965, Neville talks about some woman that's visiting and that she's about to travel the world to all these different cities. And he really wants her to share the message of the law. So over a course of three different lectures, he, he brings some heavy hitters and, and each of the lectures is different. So it's not as repetitive. Uh, when you hear Neville Goddard speak, you usually hear him share about two different things. It'll be either the law or the promise. And when he's talking about the law, And he's most passionate about how we can create our reality and how anything is possible. This particular lecture I loved because he talks about physics and Richard Feynman and his discussion of physics is very interesting. It's great to hear Neville bring imagination into physics. One more on the law. February 19th, 1965. I thought I would take a portion of John, a bit of Blake, something from a great scientist and then my own experience and weave them together for you tonight and make it a very practical night we'll start first of all with the scientist that seems to gel in the minds of people that the thing is really based upon fact why i do not know but that's how people look upon the scientific mind this chap is called feynman Richard Feynman, Professor Feynman at Caltech. He is considered one of the world's greatest physicists who is involved with our atomic bomb and our great nuclear bomb today. But basically, he likes the theoretical side of it, not the down-to-earth side. He wrote a paper which came out in 1949. It was printed in what is known as the Science Newsletter, and he was describing the behavior of a little particle which is produced by atomic disintegration. It is named today by our scientist as the positron. He wrote of the positron that it starts from where it hasn't been and speeds to where it was but an instant ago, arriving there, it has bounced so hard, its time sense is reversed and it returns to where it hasn't been. Now he said an electron that is bounced is really deflected but it continues on its course a changed course, but it doesn't turn around. So he calls this little particle the turnaround. He said, it has the capacity to meet itself coming back from where it hasn't been. Having observed this, said he, we must now completely alter our concepts of the universe. And no longer can we consider the universe and the future of the universe as developing continuously out of the past. We must now see the entire space-time history of the world laid out, and we only become aware of its increasing portions of it successively, that the whole thing is done, and you and I only become aware of increasing portions of that which is that the future is not developing out of any past, not after having observed the behavior of this little particle that they call the positron. I maintain that our scientists, by their observations, are only discovering the workings of their own minds, that the physics of the mind cannot differ in any respect from the physics of the rest of nature, so they will not go along the mystical path the path of faith. They must have it proved to them in their laboratories, which is perfectly all right. They're discovering in their labs the workings of their own mind. Now, whether Feynman discovered it to the point where he accepts it, I don't know. He's here in the city. He's in Pasadena. But here, these are his words, and I've quoted them accurately. In the October 15th letter of 1949, it's called The science newsletter and the date, you can find it in the library, October the 15th, 1949. When it was sent to me, I was stunned 
and thrilled because it is exactly how I felt towards the entire picture. Now, Blake makes the statement that the spiritual states of man, or he calls it the soul, are eternal. Then he calls upon us to distinguish between the man and his present state, that eternity exists and all things in eternity, independent of creation, which was an act of mercy. Everything exists. Everything is present and everywhere now right now that's what he claims now we go to the book of john and then we'll come together and put them all together for you the 14th chapter of the book of john first of all he calls upon us not to be disturbed let not your hearts be disturbed you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many rooms were it not so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That there I am there you will be also. Now you read this and you think a man is talking to men. It isn't so. That's not the Bible. The whole drama is taking place within us. As I read it, it's taking place within me. Do not be disturbed. You believe in God. Well, b believe also in me. The being speaking is my very being, for we are one. For in the same 14th chapter, he tells you, I am the Father. I am the only way. There is no other way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Verse 6. And so you believe in God. Believe in me, for I am the way to God, the Father. There is no other way. So believe in me. I'm talking to myself. Now in my Father's house, but I am He, there are unnumbered mansions. A mansion is simply a possibility. There are infinite possibilities in this world. And every one can be realized if I believe in me. Believe in me. Well, how could I do it? You mean I could this very night be the man that I want to be? I could actually be anything in this world? I maintain yes if I really believe in me. Well, let me share with you an experience. I did it this morning. I retired quite early and therefore I qu woke quite early. I had six unbroken hours and found myself at a very early hour of the morning fully awake, but much too early to rise and disturb the household. So while in my bed, I practiced a little something that I've done over the years. While on my bed, I imagine I'm seated on my black leather chair in my living room. I cannot see my bedroom from my living room. I imagined I am seated on my black leather chair in my living room. And when it seemed natural to me, so I could look mentally and see in the far distance this bedroom, my body in one bed and my wife's body in the other bed, then I simply returned to the body. I did a few times to get the feel. First thing, it proves to you the existence of something that isn't this. You become aware of a soul. You become aware of a power that is altogether different. You look into the mirror and you think, now that's me. This is not it at all. You leave that that you think to be yourself on the bed and you withdraw. As you withdraw, you think of what is on the bed while you are seated in your imagination on the chair you think of the bed you don't go back until you want to go back you sit there simply contemplating it then suddenly in your mind's eye you feel I'm on the bed and you feel a motion the whole thing takes place and you feel it as you return then this is what I did having done the first thing deliberately I thought now 
I'm not going to do it deliberately. I'm just going to experiment. I will withdraw from the body, but not say to myself where I will go. I'm not going to go to my chair in the living room. I don't want to go to New York now because I have no plans for New York until the fall of the year. I don't want to go to San Francisco now. Now, not until July. I don't want to go to Barbados. I have no definite plans for that. So I will not put myself in some definite spot. I will simply withdraw in space. So I will withdraw not knowing where I am and think of the body on the bed. This is what happened to me as I withdrew and became perfectly still thinking of the body in my bedroom on the bed. Suddenly, I find myself in a room and the room is sealed no door no windows there's no entrance or exit to that room but I'm on the inside beautiful room lovely colors and people are very friendly so I went back to the bed tried it again not knowing where the next one would be I withdrew and when I opened my eyes I'm in a room and here are the most angry crowd of men all of the oriental persuasion and they meant no good to the speaker but I knew how I came into that room and I knew I am completely free to leave it at will they didn't know that I knew it so I came into the room and here I am thinking of the bed and the body and as they began more and more as they almost got together in a plot of real violence I simply imagined myself on the bed and I'm back on the bed so I entered that interior through a surface that had no opening, just as the sperm enters an egg, and it has no opening. Either before or after the sperm has fertilized the egg, the being that entered that room was the power, the creative power of God, the sperm of God, and I am it. You are it. Your imagination is it. That's the immortal you that cannot die. I know now, having done it several times, last night I fertilized quite a few states. Some were pleasant and some unpleasant. I have to reap them. I was experimenting. I must be willing to let those now come into being for everything that I entered in that manner. For there are infinite possibilities in the world. Infinite. And when I either wittingly or unwittingly enter, I fertilize it. Then it grows in my world as my harvest. It couldn't come were it not that I, at some moment in time, either knowingly or unknowingly fertilized it. That creative power in man is man's own wonderful human imagination. So you could this night take this series, just as Feynman said, think of the entire space-time history of the world as laid out and we only become aware of increasing portions of it successively. I have the capacity to meet myself coming back from where I haven't been. Well, physically, I certainly had not been in these rooms, but I have been in these rooms. And they were sealed as an egg is sealed. There's no opening on the outside at all, so the sperm easily passes through the surface of an egg. Although on the outside of the egg, there is no opening or after fertilization. Well, these are the eggs, infinite number of possibilities in the world and God's creative power, which is human imagination, penetrates them and they come into being. The one who penetrates them stands and witnesses the harvest, but he doesn't recognize it because he does not remember ever having been there physically. Now, you don't go there physically, just as we are told. The positron starts from where it hasn't been, and it speeds to where it, it was an instant ago. Arriving there, it is bounced so hard, its time sense is reversed, and then it returns to where it hasn't been. So I stand here on my platform, or this morning on my bed, and then I assumed I am not on my bed without any direction, and then my inner eye opened 
and I am in a room and it's peopled. My presence in that room animated it, and it's peopled. My presence in that room animated it. It has no power in itself. It's dead until I got there. So I am in a room and they all become alive. Why? Because I am the light of the world. I illuminate it. Then I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the way. I am the truth. So as I enter this state, everything that was there becomes animated. You don't recognize that you are the animating power, the operant power that you bring into life. There it is. Now when I saw this angry crowd moving towards me, I decided to depart by simply remembering where the body was. And then I imagined myself on my bed. And then I opened my eyes, I'm back on the bed. So did I not start from where I had been physically? And did I not speed to where I was physically? And arriving there, I was bounced so hard my time sense was reversed. And then I start moving across a series of events which are going to take me to the harvest of that state. So this is the picture, how to bring things into being. So tonight, trust me, I have done it. We who sit here this night as we go into the silence and then don't sit on the chair where you are, withdraw from it and put yourself deliberately now, not in some nebulous manner, deliberately withdraw into another state. And then while in that state, whether your inner eye opens or not, you're in another state and you're seeing exactly what you want to see, everything as it ought to be seen, and feel the thrill of it, and then return to the place on this chair, and you've fertilized it. Now, every egg has its own apportioned time, every egg in this world. That was a vision of yours, and so you're told in Scripture the vision has its own appointed hour, it ripens, it will flower. If it be late, wait, for it is sure, and it will not be late. If it seems to you to be late, wait, but every egg has its own appointed hour, and we fertilize every state in this world in the same manner. You are the operant power. You are the creative power of God. You are the sperm of God, and you go into these states, and for one moment, you occupy them. As you occupy them, you fertilize them, and then you return to that body. Now, Blake makes the statement, man has no body distinct from his soul. That called body is a portion of the soul discerned by the five senses. The chief inlets of the soul in this age... So here we imposed this limitation upon ourselves for a purpose, and we will use it in this manner. I can put it down and withdraw for the purpose of impregnation. So I put it on a chair, put it on a bed, put it any place and pull away from it and then occupy another state. And then as Feynman tells me, I hurry back to it. Start from where I haven't been physically, back to where I was an instant ago physically, and then I'm bounced by the blow. I'm not deflected to go beyond it. I am turned around and then I move back to where I have been in my imagination. So we're told in the 14th of John, in my father's house, there are many rooms, infinite rooms. Were it not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And when I go, and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you shall be also. Verse 2. I'm talking to myself. So I put this thing down on a chair, or I leave it on the bed, and I go and prepare a place for you. And so I withdraw from it, and feel myself to be what at that moment reason denies. My senses deny it, and having felt it, I then return and then take it with me where I have been in my imagination. 
So I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am there ye shall be also. And then I take it with me right across a series of events, some wonderful bridge of incidents right into the place where I am in consciousness. Here in this audience tonight, two gentlemen, one told me just a little while ago, Thursday, and the other wrote me, I have the letter of one at home, and I have the memory of the words of the one who just told me his story. So when I heard you two years ago, I had nothing, but literally nothing. Today I have in my own name 30 pieces of property, 50 really, but 30 outright, 30 are mine. Well, I own 50 pieces of property, and I had nothing, literally, when I first heard you two years ago. I believed you, and I applied it. The other gentleman in his letter said, There is a family problem that can only be resolved in court. You can't resolve it outside, and we are told by the court because of a solid calendar and because of many other reasons, it could not be brought to trial to be resolved until the end of the year. And it's an urgent problem. I am part of that family, and I wanted it solved immediately. So I denied the facts of a crowded calendar. I denied the words of my lawyer. I denied the words of the court and simply remained faithful to the assumption that it is now resolved now. And this past week, I received word from the court and from my lawyer. It will be held next month in the month of March. I know it's completely resolved as I want it. But it can only be resolved in the court. It can't be resolved out of court. They wanted me to wait until the end of the year, and it's too urgent. And so now I have tangible proof it will be resolved in the month of March. So I say to everyone, it's done in the same way. Your own wonderful human imagination is not a state. That is your existence itself. The soul of man, the immortal soul, is your own wonderful human imagination. It cannot go to eternal death in that body, which cannot die. How can it? It's forever. It's passing through all these things. And you and I don't try to become a holy person. That is not our purpose. As Paul said, and he included Peter, when he made the statement in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts, he said, we are men, speaking now of the two of them, men of passions like others. We pretend not to be holier than others, just as you are. You don't have to be a holy man, as this world calls a holy man, to practice God's law. Because holiness is not a passport to heaven. Believe me, all you need to do is believe in your own wonderful human imagination. That's God. That is the being spoken of in Scripture as God, and God's creative power spoken of in Scripture as Jesus Christ is your own wonderful human imagination when it is in action. God only acts and is in existing beings or men. So let us, to Him who only is, who is among us in our own wonderful imagination, let us give to Him the decision, marriage of heaven and hell. So tonight, when you go home, if you can't do it here, when you go home, do it. Just simply withdraw from your body. You can easily do it. And may I tell you, there's no thrill comparable to this discovery of the soul of man. Because as you withdraw, you sit elsewhere thinking of the body as you left it. When you return, you feel the whole return. You actually feel something you can never feel while you are all anchored in the body. You feel it, and you sense the reality of something that cannot be detected by mortal eye. You don't have to go a hundred miles away. I used to practice this in New York City, sitting in my chair in the living room. I would put myself at the telephone, which I could not see from the angle when I was looking in the living room. While I was at the telephone, just simply talking, I would have suddenly assume I am back. And that sensation of return, I discovered through that act, this feeling in me that is the power of sense. For imagining is that wonderful sensitive power in man. It's the soul of man. Imagination is simply this peculiar reality, really, that you don't know until you try this. Tonight, anyone here can prove to their own satisfaction that you have a soul, that you are a soul. 
my dentist yesterday. He said, just came from a convention and while discussing all the new techniques of dentistry, his small crowd was concerned about immortality. One chap in particular said to him, Jim, do you believe in survival? He said, yes. Do you know? He said, no, I believe. Well, do you know of anyone who knows? He said, I think I do. I know one chap. I'm going to see him today in my chair. He tells me he knows from experience of not only survival, but resurrection. But you hear all of these doctors, they're all dentists, but that doesn't matter. Doctors too. They can't find this soul of which I speak in the brain as they operate. They can't do anything to that body and find it. Yet you, without being a doctor, you could find it this night by simply sitting next door by a matter of yards. Put yourself on a chair and feel that you are on the other chair and just wait. Wait. Don't move. Just wait in that state. And when you feel it naturally, you are just actually sitting in another chair and then remember where you were. As you remember, all of a sudden, you return and feel what you can't feel if you're always anchored in the body. Now, just as you detached yourself to move there, you can detach yourself and move into any state in the world. There are infinite states, no limit to the states, called rooms or houses in the scripture. These rooms are simply, in the early days of our state, we had the great monasteries and the weary travelers could remain for a night or maybe two days for a rest as he moved north or south, and there he remained. Well, in the grand manner, a far greater picture, these states are where we rest while we are seeking one thing only. We are trying to find the only true God, and so we go from state to state to state, in our search to find the only true God. And you can find him if you do what I asked you to do tonight. Not only you'll find him, but you'll find him as a power. And you can go into any state and fertilize it. Your entrance into a state as you occupy it fertilizes it. I know as I stand here tonight, I've got to reap what I did this morning. Just because I experimented, I'm quite willing to reap them. I'll reap them, all of them. But it was such fun. Not taking some def definite spot, just taking a withdrawal and remained withdrawal from the body. As I withdrew, I remained. And suddenly I found myself on the inside of a closed room. And I mean closed. It's sealed. There is no door, no window, no opening at all. Everything is sealed. But I knew how I got in. I got in by the power of Jesus Christ, my own wonderful human imagination, and therefore I could get out just as I got in. And when the angry crowd started moving towards me, for I animated them, they are a part of that state. They belong to that state. They are always part of that state. And so I unwittingly fell into it by not deliberately setting myself a goal. So I fertilized it. It'll come and I must be quite willing to receive it knowing I can escape from anything in this world if I remember who I am. So I say to everyone here, take these passages and put them together. The scientist who finds a little particle, he doesn't know he's watching his own mind. And this little thing starts from where it hasn't been and it speeds to where it was an instant ago. When it arrives there, sudden, instead of being deflected to continue on its way it is bounced so it hard it turned around and moves back to where it hasn't been so you move back to where you actually have been in consciousness in your imagination you haven't been there physically but you come back and pick up your body physically and you take it across a bridge of incident a series of events leading up to where you actually have been in consciousness. Then you can turn to the 14th chapter of John and see how the first three verses are related to Feynman's discovery. I will go and prepare a place for you. And then I go, I will come again and I will take you with myself. That where I am in consciousness, there in flesh, ye shall also be. Then you move across a series of events and there you go to reap the harvest of your own fertilization because you fertilized it. Then you can see Blake's vision where the whole vast world, eternity is, and all things in eternity independent of our individual acts of creation. They all are these states 
are. I didn't create these Orientals. They were all in that state. I withdrew from my body, which is only a portion of my soul discerned by my senses to find myself in a state. I'm the light of the world. I am the life. I am the way into these states. I am the truth of these states. So that when I moved into the state, they became animated and they are angry in that state. And I did not deliberately go into it. But I was simply experimenting and I fertilized it. For my presence in any state is life and I fertilize. So in the course of a day, when we do not know this law, how many states you and I fertilize in our daydreams? As children feeling sorry for ourselves, so mother simply punished us because we did something that we should not have done. And so not knowing this law, we go in the backyard mentally and eat worms. So when we go into the world, we reap the worms because we forget that in these states, we are fertilizing them for our imagination is the creative power of the universe. It is Christ Jesus. It is the creative power of God as told us in scripture, 1 Corinthians 1 24. So you can start tonight and do it deliberately. May I tell you, try it this night. Just feel the reality of the soul. You will not be part of the crowd of dentists from yesterday who have no knowledge of a soul because you'll feel it. You'll know it. You'll actually know the existence of a soul. And so instead of wondering what's going to happen to me, do we really survive? Is there such a thing as a future beyond the grave? You won't have to ask that. And you don't care whether you sleep tonight from the grave in this world or not. Because you know as far as you are concerned, it doesn't really matter. You are immortal. He's prepared the way for his creative power to return to him. And that way that he prepared is revealed to us in scripture as the life, Jesus Christ, his birth, his discovery of the fatherhood of God, his wonderful story of the serpent. And you will discover this much that it's on three different levels. I've been giving you the middle level tonight. You read the story on the first level, which is called the first deck of the ark. It's literally true like a story that you will read over. That's the first deck. The second is what we have been discussing, the psychological motion to fertilize these states. And the top story, which is the spiritual story, is identical with its first, only its personal. It's very personal. Everything said there and thought of another you experience. So when he withdrew the rod down and it turned into a fiery serpent, you realize what throwing the rod down is, that you are the very one. Your spinal cord is the rod thrown down and you turn into this fiery serpent and then up you go. So everything said in scripture on the third level is a personal level and you experience the whole thing personally. On the lowest level, you read it as history, something that took place thousands of years ago. That's how you read it. On the second level, which we discussed tonight, you can do it to fertilize states and change your world, change everything in your world to conform to your heart's desire. Like the chap who would not take the statement, the calendar is so crowded that you can't possibly get the case in until the end of the year. Wouldn't accept it. He denied the facts, fertilized the immediate present, and the court calls, the lawyer calls. It's resolved in the month of March. The other chap had nothing now he has 30 parcels in his own name and 50 all told. And he had nothing when he heard this story. He fertilized all these states. That is the second level. Then comes the third level. And oh, what a glorious level. When the entire story unfolds within you. Personally, and it's all your story. The child. The resurrection. The tomb, all these spoken of as another. It's all about you. And you experience everything in it. The dove spoken of another, not another at all. The luminosity of the heavens. When the whole heavens open up 
and then the voice sounded out its praise and its thrill and its pleasure with his son and descended on that son in the form of a dove and it's all you everything spoken of another that took place thousands of years ago you experience that's the third level then you wait for the inevitable removal of this which you crystallized for a purpose you assumed this limit of contraction called this body and when you take it off it resolves itself and then you return but then you return infinitely greater because of your experience in this world so when Blake made this statement quoting the 14th chapter of the book of Acts he added a line to it in fact he changed it somewhere when he said we are men just as you are men no holier than any man in this world and knowing what he did to find it out he said bring forth all your fires put me through all the furnaces of affliction I will take them so I fertilized just to test a horrible state well I can't deny it I did it it's my child so bring it and so I move into a state of war in my own stupidity all right bring it I can't deny my children on this plane I heard of all kinds of things and then stupidly moved into it unwittingly and unfertilized it now they've got to come everything must come into this world to prove the power of my creativity if I know it I will let them come and then quickly cut them off because what you planted you need not let it go forever you can cut it off but don't until it grows he said do not attempt to tear up the little wheat let it grow with the wheat and as they grow then you can separate them so let them grow for you didn't plant only the tars and only the little weed you planted wonderful things in this world and so let them come together when they're completely matured you can simply separate them so tonight in a very simple way for those who are here for the first time let me show you how we actually operate this simple simple principle instead of withdrawing from the body and knowingly into any old state you withdraw deliberately into a predetermined state so you put the body on the bed or on the chair and you imagine yourself in this state in this world you want to be successful with whom would you share it a few friends at a little dinner party or a luncheon or tea or a cocktail party any kind of party where they would discuss your success and truly discuss it in the sense that they would be happy about it well now know exactly where you're going to go while you are still seated anchored to this body and then let the body relax and get into that area in your mind's eye where your friends are present and you're all discussing your success and it all seems natural you are accepting their praise accepting their congratulations and it seems very very natural with all the sensory tones of reality then return to the body and allow Feynman's concept it starts from where it hasn't been and it speeds to where it was an instant ago as it arrives there it is bounced so hard it's turned around its time sense is turned around and now it returns to where it hasn't been see it it starts in time from where it hasn't yet realized the state and moves back to where physically it was only an instant ago and then it's bounced and turned around and it moves across this bridge of incident leading up to the fulfillment of that state in consciousness where you were where all these friends were gathered together to congratulate you on your good fortune and that's how it works so you can take Feynman the 14th of John my experience of this morning and my friend Blake and put them all together and see they're all talking about the same thing only I would have everyone here do it deliberately and not unknowingly so that you would only fertilize lovely areas but this morning I did it just for fun because I really don't care if I know that I'm bringing all things into the world it doesn't really matter I don't judge anyone really because he is not the state he simply fertilized it at some point in time and therefore forgive him because he did it unknowingly or he would not have brought it into this world so you can forgive everyone in this world 
for what he's harvesting because he had to harvest his own fertilized field and he didn't know he was doing it. So Blake said, always discriminate between the state of the man and the man. And he identifies the man with imagination. He said, man is all imagination and God is man and exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination and that is God himself. So you can forgive a man for his state, for he certainly planted it or he fertilized it. It was always there, but not fertilized and can only be fertilized if the soul entered it and the soul and the human imagination are one. So we can start tonight in spite of what's coming into our world and duplicate the success of the two gentlemen that I spoke of tonight. There will be eventually 100% success. I'm not saying that you're not going to harvest the unlovely things that you did in the past. You'll harvest them, but then know that you did them and forget it. Don't blame yourself. Don't feel sorry for yourself because it's feeling sorry for yourself in the past that caused you to fertilize that state. So we all know as children, if we were criticized and we thought it was just not unjust criticism, we felt very sorry for ourselves and wanted to hurt those who loved us most by our own self-pity. In that act of self-pity, you were fertilizing. You didn't know it because we certainly were not in the body. We were completely gone, were we not? So that's how we do it. But above all things, you can discover the reality of the soul, that which cannot die. So when Blake said, when I first and once did describe the immortal man that cannot die, and what a thrill, what a joy it is to discover that self of selves that cannot die. It doesn't really matter. You don't want to leave your friends. You have obligations to life. You have wives and husbands and children, all kinds of things in this world. And you feel that your presence is necessary. You know that much, but yet you are resigned to go any moment in time because you now know you are planted enough or you should know that and you'll take it off. Although they'll miss your physical presence, nevertheless, you don't have that fear of going. There's no fear of going at all. You go any moment in time when you know the reality of the soul of man, for they can't die either. You know that much. So the parting is not forever. The parting is only for a little moment and all must make their exit from this world. All must. So it doesn't really matter. So try this night to feel and discover the reality of the soul of man and know that it is the sperm of God, the creative power of God. And every state it enters, it fertilizes and these states mature in the world. Now, let us go into the silence. So what I'm going to do now is give you a little bit of time as Neville did in his lectures. When he said, let us go into the silence, he would then give two minutes of silence. There is a set of questions after this, and then we'll do that. But follow some of his techniques for the next two minutes. Right now, I suggest that you try the technique that he talked about, imagining your body in another state. And the bounce back will lead in a bridge of incidents, which we'll talk about in one second. So just go in to the silence.
very good. Neville then says, before the questions, may I remind you, this is easy. Don't let anyone tell you it is difficult. Let no one tell you that you must be a holy person to do it. Let no one. It's very easy. Without even bringing anyone into your mind's eye, an individual just reminisce. Sitting physically one place and standing at your window. It could be the same room, mentally and looking out on a scene. Then feel the joy and the thrill of your accomplishments as though they were facts. And then snap back to the body that is only a foot or so away in the same room. In that very moment you fertilize the state because everything is everywhere and now right here. Don't have to rush off to do it at all, just right here. Question. Couldn't you, through revision, change the scene that was unpleasant this morning? Yes, I could. But do you know I'm curious? I know I sired that state. What thrilled me, I'm going to do it. Because I observed everything, not a little crevice, not a hole in it that would allow me to get into it. So not a thing could keep me out and not a thing could keep me in. I'm glad I did it. I told you one unlovely state, but many were perfectly lovely. I did it just to experiment. It was lots of fun. But they could be revised and addle the egg. What if someone happened to the body while you were away? It won't. Not a thing will happen to the body. Sir, not a thing. I know there are many books and many teachers who tell you if you're out, someone would take possession of it. Don't you believe it? No one is going to take possession of that body at all. You can have some strange experiences outside the body, which can be costly in my own case. It was painful and costly, but I'm glad it happened. And besides, I learned a lesson. Well, what about fire? Oh no, it wouldn't. Doesn't take long, just a matter of seconds. Just a matter of seconds. It doesn't take more than a matter of seconds to detach and feel the state and seal it. No one state I entered this morning if you time it would not have been more than 10 to 15 seconds it was all real just like this and then i went back to the body went to another state so you aren't gone really it's fun may i tell you it's lots of fun but you discover the soul and you use the being that you really are some things you go a little far sometimes and you might well in my own case where i was i don't know some fabulous distance, but I came back towards the body like a meteor falling. I fell in the descent. It was so rapid and from such an enormous distance that I would break my neck in the descent. And so I did this as you would dive in, not the body on the pool. And I heard a click after I told my wife at breakfast what I'd experienced that morning. And then as the day progressed, it got stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And that night the pain was excruciating. So she insisted that I go to the hospital for an x-ray. So they x-rayed me, not a thing could they could find, but they knew from my face, I was in great pain and they tried to put me in traction, but they had no room available. So I couldn't remain in the hospital because there was no room went back home and next day it was eased a little bit and the next day a little bit better and then it returned after three days to a norm but the experience cost me 125 dollars the x-rays were 25 dollars for his interpretation was 40 the taxi back and forth the room that they couldn't give me was another 25 or 30 because i, I occupied it for a while but i couldn't remain in it but all of these things and the family doctor whom we called who recommended the hospital he sent his bill so you add the whole thing together. It cost me a hundred odd for the wonderful experience of coming like a meteor towards my body, trying to protect myself from breaking my neck. I did this in my imagination and the x-ray couldn't show anything. He said, your face shows terrific pain, but I can't detect from these x-rays anything. And this was the head doctor at the Presbyterian hospital in New York city, the biggest hospital in New York city. If not in the country, Presbyterian medical, and here was the head man on bones and he knew all about bones, but he couldn't read that picture. When I told him that I, what I did in my vision, he broke into a wonderful laugh talking to him. He couldn't believe that for one moment. And yet that was the cause of it. I had the experience. He didn't, and he couldn't find with all of his technical pictures, anything wrong with me. 
but he could see in my face I was in great, great pain. So I have these experiences, not all result that way, but I, I won't stop them. An audible question. It's a peculiar feeling. We'll try it tonight and, and you'll know far better. Question. I have tried it and I've been very successful at it. Well, I'll tell you what. Don't go too far. Sit in one chair. Imagine yourself on another chair. And don't break that spell until the other chair seems as natural as where the body was when you started. Make it natural. Feel an object if it's next to a bookcase as though you were taking a book from the shelf and feel natural. And then be surprised when you aren't really here. But there it comes in a peculiar feeling and a surprise that you're there. It's a detachment. All this doesn't make sense. But to me, it's the only sense. Could I in this state move an object? It's been done. Like you said, if I were sitting here, I could pick this book up and say, set it down on the other. My dear, it has been done. Not once, but time and time again. We told a story the other night how many people believed it is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned, but there's no, you can't rationalize it. How could a man in his excitement after having had the most wonderful experience share the experience with a dear friend back east in the form of a letter and late on the evening of say Thursday he posts a letter. It's marked by the postal department. The time is evening. It's Los Angeles. If you take the difference in time between here and where it was posted, that office was already closed when he posted it. The office was closed and it was opened by anyone. It wasn't sent in any strange matter. It was an airmail, not special delivery. When the manager of that office arrived the next day, the letter was on his desk, and yet the mail of the day had not been delivered. So she got on the wire and called. How could this thing be? There are so many strange things in this world. Question. Neville, if I should be so successful as to take this little soul journey... Is it possible that you're making him dead to realize that? You were not ever in the body? Well, my, my wife has seen me walk through the door so often, and the body was on the bed, that she's not disturbed anymore. So often she's seen what she should be on the bed, walking around, and she looks, and there he is. I've got two husbands. There's one walking there, and there's one on the bed. But at first it disturbed her, but it doesn't disturb her anymore. So often she's seen it. One morning we had a little dog, a little black and tan cocker, called him Henry. Well, Henry would always sleep on my wife's bed on my, or on my daughter's bed. He'd never come near mine because it's kick him off. And so I didn't want to be disturbed with this dog. But... She would never call it a disturbance, and if I ever scolded him, she would scold me, because it was never a part of an argument. Henry got the better of it. So this night, in the wee hours of the morning, I awoke and looked over, and I saw the whole bed shaking, and I said to myself, that darn dog, it's disturbing Bill's rest. I looked down, and here's Henry on the floor. He's not in the bed at all. He's looking up at the bed, scared stiff, so I looked at the bed again, and here was my wife out of her body about, I would say a foot out of the body and going this way from head to foot, but going about six inches beyond. So at this point, the tape runs out. There may have been more questions asked, but I just love this lecture. And it really feels to me like he is talking about quantum jumping, jumping into another reality, entering into a reality as a state and then jumping back to your body and then the bridge of incidents that occurs is what happens as you slide over into this reality that you had already entered into. So there's a lot of discussion in this episode about out of body experiences and astral travel. And he's almost making astral travel as a part of manifesting, which is very interesting. You, you astrally travel just like you enter into states is what he is saying in this lecture but i'd love to get your comments of what you think about his examples on the positron and if you know if that has changed uh, i'm not aware of the of the discussion of the positron with richard Feynman, so i'd love to know if since 1965 our understanding of the positron has changed but i would refer you to the episode 
uh, by Dolores Canyon on simultaneous time. He is talking about the same concept of simultaneous time. When we talk about the eternal present moment, there is this concept that is talked about with block time in physics, where all of time exists as one. And it's even discussed in Transurfing that all the scripts are already available to us. And we're just entering into a space of variations in this moment. And we're seeing portions of this time stream. There is not one fixed time or destiny in the future. There are many. And uh, so this was very fun to read, very applicable and interesting technique. Uh, I have not heard him describe this technique in this way. I believe it's Neville's explanation of the quantum jump, the jumping back into the body being the important part. And I'm certain that I will create a meditation at some point around this, this particular lecture. I would love to get your take on these the, on this lecture on the law and the last three lectures. And if you got a greater understanding on, of how imagination creates reality, I am just fascinated by Neville Goddard. This man had so many different incredible lectures. They were not, sometimes he repeated himself, but a lot of times he's bringing up brand new stories, brand new, new examples, and could cite the Bible with such ease his examples were great. His way of talking and the, the language that he used was very powerful. And you can feel the sincerity and authenticity in his words. So I would love to get your feelings on it. Please like this video and play some comments so other people may find this information. And, and maybe there's someone out there that can use this information to create or change their reality. This bridge of incidents is important to understand. I just had uh, a memory of a story of somebody I knew that was really struggling. Their car, had, they had just got a car and the car broke down and the car leaked. And then they had to continue paying on this car and they didn't have a job. And all these things had started piling up. And I remember talking to him and saying, you, you need to take responsibility for your imagination and just imagine that right now, everything that's happened with the car is from your imagination. And so let's together, let's imagine this car being fixed and that you have a new job and that you're happy and it's, it's what you want to do and, you're, and it's a joyful situation. The person that I was talking to did not believe me in any way, shape or form and seemed annoyed by what I was talking about. But several weeks later, he started to mention some things that had happened and the car had started, he got the battery fixed so that he could have it looked at. And then somebody had made an offer on the car and then he got more than he had thought. And they, somebody else had offered a replacement. He found a great ride. He found a great job. All this bridge of incidents occurred and he was imagining himself driving a different car and a happy job as we discussed. So sometimes if you're out there and you're in a situation and it seems impossible and you've had all these consecutive things piling up, another story that I remember I had, I had a friend that was really struggling with alcohol and had gotten a DUI and was so scared, had not gone to the police, had gotten another DUI and because he was parked in a parking lot and they had knocked on his door. None of these things are, uh, are excusable. These are all bad things, but he was, he was scared to go because he thought he, he was because it had been two times and then finally imagined that everything had been taken care of and then decided, okay, I'm going to take care of this because I believe now that I'm in this state where these things are going to be taken care of to my advantage and had gone and there had been a paperwork error and there was no record of the DUIs and they had disappeared. A bridge of incidents will occur and miraculous things occur as the example that Neville gives of the letter that just magically appears. So I know there are people listening that do not believe in these kind of supernatural things. But if you start experimenting with these techniques, you will see them. I promise. That is my promise to you. That's why I'm so passionate about it. Because when I saw it, there was no doubt about my place in the universe. And the more I saw these techniques work, the more I wanted to share them and the more I wanted to use them to help as many people as possible. And I hope that it's helping you in any case. I always enjoy these excursions into metaphysics and reality. Thank you for sharing it with me. All episodes of the reality revolution can be found at the reality revolution.com. Join the Facebook group. It's a family there and you can ask any questions and I share these videos and we talk about them and I would love to see you there. 
If you have any questions, you can put them in that Facebook group or in these comments. And if you want me to imagine something for you, I'm happy to do it. Just put it in the comments and I promise I will imagine you for however you want. My imagination is yours as your imagination as we are all one beautiful, wonderful human imagination and that is the part that I'm most interested in. In any case, thank you and welcome to the Reality Revolution. Well, welcome to the Reality Revolution. Unlimited possibilities. Dedicated to the spirits who believe life is meant to be magical. Get out. Yes, some really good meditations. And you discuss. It contains advanced viewpoints of the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. I'm your host, Brian Scott. <laughs> Sometimes you need to go back. We were able to visualize with exploring stuff that's fun to explore. I can tell. Unleash your potential. Some topics on how to change the subconscious mind and some interesting. I'm your host, Brian Scott.